Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Book Ascent of Soul Chapter Spirit and Spirituality Page number 23 Subtopic Recognition and Paradise As mentioned earlier where the recognition of God is attained through the light of recognition nothing is excluded from that recognition because it comprises and covers everything and so paradise is also included in this vast domain this means that in the manifestations of spirit and spirituality which are observed as a result of successful remembrance and luminous ibadat paradise is also included as god says and i quote and he will admit them into paradise which he has already made recognizable to them and quote surah 47 verse 6 this shows that paradise must be recognized in this very life so that it may remain forever after death otherwise it is impossible to recognize it in the hereafter it is in this sense that god says in the verse Surah 17, verse 72, and I quote, And whosoever is blind in this life, he shall also be blind in the hereafter, and far astray from the straight path, end quote. This verse clearly shows the importance of the inner eye and the observation of spirituality, and therefore a moment must attach himself to the firman of the imam of the time it is he who is appointed by god and the chosen prophet for this supreme rank and by obeying him a moment can attain the knowledge of certainty and the light of recognition shukran lillah walhamdulillah shukran lillah walhamdulillah subtopic knowledge of certainty ilmul yakin if a moment cannot observe the paradise of spirit and spirituality with the inner eye in this life, he should not be disappointed if he is staunch and firm in faith and love for the Imam of the time. In such a case, he can use the knowledge of certainty and can conceive the realities of paradise, because in the absence of the eye of the heart and spiritual light, the light of knowledge of certainty works as the eye, about which the Noble Quran says, and I quote, Nay, would that you knew knowledge of certainty, you shall certainly see hellfire, end quote. Surah 102, verse 5 and 6. In these verses, there is the praise of the knowledge of certainty, and this clearly means that those fortunate moments who have the knowledge of certainty see not only hell but also recognize the realities of paradise in its illumination and all this should be completed in this world before one's death so that after the knowledge of certainty the rank of the eye of certainty may be attained Shukran lilla, walhamdulillah, shukran lilla, walhamdulillah. Subtopic, the eye of certainty, Ainul Yakin. By the eye of certainty is meant the eye of the heart or the inner eye, with which men can see and recognize his own spirit and spirituality, as well as everything of the spiritual world and paradise recognition becomes complete at this place if a moment has not been able to attain this place he should know that he is lacking either in the knowledge of certainty or in ibadat spiritual exercise and true love therefore he should obey the imam of the time completely with sincerity and love and strive for remembrance, ibadat, and true knowledge, so that by the pleasure of God, 
and the Prophet, he may receive the help and luminous guidance of the Imam of the time and thereby easily attain the rank of the knowledge of certainty and the eye of certainty. Shukran lillah walhamdulillah. Shukran lillah walhamdulillah. Ya Ali Mother to all friends. Ali Madad. Ali Madad. Thank you. Thank you for your response. Alhamdulillah, we have gathered here to continue the study of our book, Ascent of Soul. And today, the topic we have is recognition of paradise. And we are truly grateful to Naveen Sahiba for recording the chapter and sharing with us in advance so i hope that you all have either read or listened to the lecture so we will not read the book today because we already had the pre-reading done or heard the uh, recording of it so let us start with this topic recognition of paradise recognition of paradise the paragraph starts and it says as a successful as a result of successful remembrance and luminous ibadat this recognition is attained paradise we all understand right we have heard of hell and heaven right paradise jannat and those are so what we understand from reading the chapter that if a momin a salik does do successful ibadat remembers does Nurani time ibadat in the light of true knowledge, this recognition, which is the recognition of paradise, can be attained. Remember in this chapter, we've been discussing recognition and Quran. And today it is recognition and paradise. Very interestingly, we have to realize that when we had started our Ilmi journey, this knowledge classes, we used to talk about recognition of Imam. But very interestingly, the more we are reading these Tawili books, what we are understanding that we have to recognize very many things. And it continues to unfold on us that the way we discuss that the Quran itself is an enormous universe and we need to have recognition of Quran itself, though it is a book but we need to recognize that book as well. Similarly, in today's uh, topic, it is about recognition and paradise. So what we are learning that when a moment in Salik starts the journey of remembering Imam, doing Nurani time ibadat, learning knowledge, very beautifully, the light of recognition, the nur of marifat, is received and very interestingly it is not limited to the way we used to think we need to recognize imam and that is it in reality what we are realizing that for our spirit and spirituality there are very many manifestations in ruhaniyat there are very many sarub in ruhaniyat and all have to be observed we need to be able to have this mushahida vision of all the manifestations which are hidden in our ruhaniyat ruhaniyat is full of different sarups different manifestation and as a moment in salik when we walk on this path to ascend our soul what we are learning that we want to have we need to have every recognition including the recognition of paradise now, very beautifully, this paragraph mentions this Quranic chapter 47 by 6, which says, and he will admit them into paradise, which he has already made recognizable to them. So already is actually Allah Sahib adding that in the chapter, in the book, that this is known paradise question is how known where known you know we need to really understand reflect 
that we will be admitted into the paradise which we have already recognized it. Surely this shows that we will recognize this paradise during our lifetime. And if I were to ask whose recognition we are talking about here, and someone may say, oh, we are talking about the recognition of Imam because Imam himself is the paradise for us. And you would be right when you respond like that, you would be correct. However, this book, which is about ascending our soul, right? progressing of our soul, what we are realizing that we need to not only recognize the Imam, but the paradise on its own, Quran on its own, and all that recognition which we've been discussing in this book to elevate our soul. So in one way, you would be correct to say that it is all about recognition of Imam. However, here it is talking about as if Paradise is a place, right? It is a place where we are going to go to. It is not a person. So how do we reconcile this? Is it a person? It is a place. What is paradise? So here, what is being alluded, it is indicating to us that this paradise is actually for those martyrs, those Shaheed, who actually die while living to recognize this paradise during this lifetime. Because it's very clearly saying in this Quranic verse that they will be admitted to the paradise, which they already know. Meaning tomorrow when we go in the hereafter, we would already know our paradise. There'll be nothing hidden from us. So that is what we are talking about today. Very, very interesting topic. Now let's look at our Ginanik Talimat from our peer because it is very, very important to remain connected to the Talimat, which we already know, to realize that we are expanding on already what we knew. We are now studying Quran, Tawili books, but it is actually being taught to us by our peers in very brief, you know, uh, limited words. Now we are unfolding these concepts and realizing and learning it in today's time, because today we need to know the Quran. So in this Ginan, Pir Hassan Kabiruddin says to us in the Ginan, Eji Imam Picharo to Siddhak Durust Tusa Jannat Pao Tharji. If you recognize the Imam, very beautifully, interestingly, this translator says in the bracket, in his essence. If you recognize the Imam, your Iman, again in bracket, will be sound and unshakable. Though here, if you read the Gujarati, to Siddhak Durust, you know, you, if you are, were to be righteous, if you're honest, sincere, on the right path, your Iman is unshakable. Okay. Then you will attain an abode in paradise. So here we are getting a place in paradise, but it is dependent on the recognition of Iman. Let's look at another verse in Ginan. This is again by Pir Hasan Kabiruddin. He says, Eji marna bi marna yara sab koi jane. Chintana chete ne aap vakhane, varne chet jannat pura kya tha ki paave bhi, saaya. Everyone has to die. We all know everyone has to die. Oh friend, everyone knows about it. Yet they do not reflect over this in their minds and engage in self-praise, self-boosting. Despite of knowing that everyone will die, they praise their own self. Without being cautious and vigilant, how can one attain the paradise and the angels? Very beautifully, Peter is teaching us that if, you, if we are interested to 
attain our paradise, our abode in paradise, recognize the paradise. We got to be mindful every second of our life. We need to be vigilant. Because if we become self-centered or self, uh, you know, praising people, what will happen? We will lose the purpose of our life, which was, which is to attain the recognition. And this is the recognition of paradise and our angels as well. We will not get our angels or the recognition of paradise. So very, very interesting uh, Gnanic words. Needs a lot of reflection actually. And in the first uh, slide, we had asked this question that I must show it to you because I didn't mention this one, last one. This Quranic verse says that we will be admitted into this paradise which is made known to us. Then the chapter says, otherwise it is impossible to recognize the paradise. Meaning, we all will be admitted to the paradise which we already know. If we don't know, then it is impossible to recognize that paradise in the hereafter. Meaning, there is no other choice. We have to recognize during our lifetime. Why is it impossible? That's the question we need to reflect on. Why is it impossible to recognize this paradise when we are in hereafter? So we actually know the answer. Again, someone, if I were to discuss it with you, you will say that, if someone, if we do not recognize the Imam in this lifetime, because we have learned this, how important it is to recognize the Imam. And my Imam is my paradise. And as I said, you all will be correct in your answer. However, when we studied that verse, which says that we will be admitted to the paradise, which we already know, which we already know, this verse, which now tells us that whosoever is blind in this life, whosoever is blind in this life, meaning if they did not recognize the paradise in their lifetime, they will remain blind in hereafter. They will remain blind. So here is the answer. Those who will attain the recognition of paradise they will be entering, they will be admitted to the paradise which they already know. But if they do not do so, why? Because they chose to remain blind. If someone is blind in this lifetime, we are not talking about physical blindness. We are talking about opening up the batni eyes, inner eyes, to experience ruhaniyat in their batni. To have mushahidat, alam e khayal, the world of imagination, alam e khab, the world of dreams. And then comes alam e ruhaniyat, the world of ruhaniyat. All these stages are in steps of progression. So if someone does not seek this recognition during their lifetime, to do what? to be able to open up their batni eyes during their lifetime, meaning they remain blind. And whosoever is blind in this lifetime will remain blind in the hereafter. Now this is worrisome. This understanding from this paragraph is worrisome because now we all are worried. What will happen to us? Then I would say, remember, when we are on the journey of knowledge, we are on the path. Those who choose to remain blind, they are far astray from the straight path. But those mumin and salikin who start walking on the path, they start obeying, first understanding the farmans and then obeying the farman of the imam of the time with conviction. These Imam who are Imam e Barhak, Nurun Allah Nur, from the progeny of Prophet Muhammad 
If we understand that they are from the progeny, they are appointed, they are chosen imam, they have the supreme rank. If we understand the rank of imam in the time of Qiyamah, how? By obeying the farmans of imam, by seeking knowledge, then only we will have the nur of marifat, the light of recognition which we are seeking. Otherwise, it is very, very clear that those who are blind in this life will remain blind there as well. So again, to emphasize, what are we seeking? Batniyak, Chashme Basirat, inner eyes. All the Batni senses has to open up. We need to be able to have Ruhaniyat, be able to see the personal world. How will that happen? Truly, actually, by obedience to Imam of the time, who is chosen and appointed. And here, if we really want to reflect, all who have been attending these classes regularly, I hope you remember, we also discussed this in Gujarati Farman class, Chapter 57, verses 12 and 13. Those who have the recognition during their lifetime will be on the other side. And those who chose to remain blind in the hereafter will be able to see those who are in paradise. But they are not able to get there. They are not able to get there. Why? Because there is a door in between and that door is locked. And they are told what? When they are asking for help to be able to go to paradise, they are being told, no, return back where you left the light. Question is, where are we leaving the light? Peter just said, by becoming, indulging in your self-praising or by, you know, worldly love. Where are we stuck? All these are questions for reflection for us to wake up and become mindful and come out of the blindness. Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah's beautiful Farman, Darkhana Bombay, 27th April 1891. <laughs> मुसलमान थियो तो मोटो थियो नथी अगर तमे खो जाथिया तो एवा विचार नहीं करो के अमे बिहिष्ट मा जाशो इबादत बंदगी करशो तो बिहिष्ट मा जाशो वेरी वेरी क्लियर फॉर मा इफ वी आर स्माइलीज एंड वी थिंक दैट वी विल एंटर इनटू पैराडाइज बिकॉज़ वी आर विद इमाम इमाम सेज इफ यू विल नॉट फुलफिल योर कमिटमेंट्स यू विल नॉट गो टू पैराडाइज so those who choose to remain blind in this life will remain blind there. So paradise, you know, in other Farman, Imam says that paradise is like a stable of a horse. Right? So again, someone can ask how these two Farmans are kind of not making sense. I do not need to go to the stable of the horse. I want to go to paradise. If paradise is stable of horse, I do not need to go. Meaning, if it doesn't make sense, there is a hidden secret. Whenever in Farman and Quran, when we study and things don't make sense, you know, they seem illogical, there is hidden meaning behind it. In one place, Imam says that paradise is the stable of horses. On the other place, he says that you will not go to paradise as if we have to go to paradise. And Imam says you need to do your ibadat and bandagi. But if the paradise is the stable of horses, why do I need to go there? Meaning, we have not recognized the paradise which Imam wants us to recognize. In a worldly sense, at the level of a moment who does not have knowledge paradise is a place of comfort and happiness 
and that place is equals to a place for a horse, old horse, kept in a stable. Imam is saying, not that paradise. This paradise, which one can get through ibadat or bandagi, farman, bardari, ilm or amal, that is a different level of paradise. And here today, we are talking about recognition and paradise. So it is to know what is that paradise. What if mu'min cannot observe paradise? Because, you know, we are walking on the path, but what if we do not recognize, do not see in our ruhani of this paradise, the way it says in chapter 47, verse 6, that we will be admitted to that paradise which already is known to us. What if women cannot observe paradise? What will happen to them? And again, in this chapter, it is being taught to us. If a woman cannot observe the paradise in their own ruhaniyat, with their batni eyes, with their chashme basirat, during their lifetime, the question is, how would we behave? Should they get disappointed? Will they ask themselves that they are staunch mominin? Is the Iman firm? Are they lovers of Imam? Imam e Barha, the righteous Imam of the time? If someone says that I have not observed this paradise, these are the questions to be asking ourselves. And remember, these questions we cannot ask each other. These are questions to our own self. So if Mumin as Salik is a staunch Mumin, has a firm Imam, has the love of Imam in their heart. For them, there is glad tiding, there is guidance. What is the guidance? Answer is in chapter 102, verse 5 and 6. What does Allah say in Quran? Kala lo ta'lamuna ilmul yakina. No. If you only knew with knowledge of certainty. Latarauna al jihim, you will surely see the hellfire. Very, very interestingly, it doesn't say that we will see the paradise. If we were to have knowledge of certainty, we will see the hellfire. So, number one, first thing first, the answer to those who think, oh, what will happen if I'm not observing this paradise in my Ruhaniya? The answer is, seek knowledge of certainty, ilmul yaki. And then we really have to understand this verse. It says that they will surely see the hellfire. Meaning, when we seek this true knowledge, not only that we will know in the knowledge journey, about the paradise, but we will also know what is the hellfire. Nothing will be hidden to them. Those arifin, those momin and salikin who become arif, who seek knowledge, nothing is going to remain hidden from them. They will have the knowledge of the paradise as well as hellfire. That's so, in these verses, what we are understanding, truly there is a praise of knowledge of certainty. We do need to have ilmul yakin. Those mu'minins are truly fortunate. Truly, they are fortunate who have knowledge of certainty. One of the friends recently asked me, do I have recognition? And my answer was, are you on the path of knowledge? And if you are, you know the answer. Because recognition first is attained on the path of knowledge, knowledge of certainty. So when someone has the knowledge of certainty, not only that they recognize the realities of paradise, they see everything. They come to find out what is even hellfire. Why? Because even the knowledge enlightens their mind, their heart. Intellectually, they are able to understand and see everything. Nothing remains hidden from their 
at the level of knowledge. So what we are saying? We are saying that through knowledge, we will be able to conceive the realities of paradise. We are very blessed to be blessed with our intellect. When we use our intellect in the journey of knowledge, we will be able to conceive all those realities which are hidden from us right now. Only if we are walking on the path of knowledge. Now the question is, I understand at the level of knowledge, what is next? What would be after that? So let's see what is after that. Question, is it possible to recognize paradise? Still we are asking that question. We will go back to that question, what is after that in a minute. Let's see what is in this slide. So whoever is blind in this world, they will be blind in hereafter as well. In fact, far astray from the straight path. So the reason here we are discussing this again because we need to relate to the last class as well because we continue to review what we have done because all these points we are discussing, they all are interrelated. So in the last class, we had talked about Quran. Quran being encompassed in a dot. Quran, which is an enormous universe, encompassed in a dot. And then we had learned that this dot has expanded into words and then chapters and then section and then we have whole big thick book of Quran, right? Meaning that dot continue to unfold, unfold, unfold. And we are seeing a whole big book. This is beautiful habit of Allah. What he does, he takes everything. For example, the whole universe and he has encompassed that whole universe in the personal world of a Mumin Salik. That is why Maula Ali said that don't think of yourself as a small being because the whole universe is within you. All universe is within you. That is one example. Second example of, again, Maula Ali saying that I am that dot under Ba in the Bismillah of the first chapter. And the whole Quran is encompassed in that dot. How is it encompassed in that dot? So one example we took of words, chapter and sections. But then someone might say, oh, it is Imam because he is the Natik Quran. He is the speaking book. And you will be correct in that, give, that answer as well. So interestingly, what we are realizing here, that there are so many different ways of looking at one concept. The reality remains the same. Examples can be many. To look at it from different angles, there are so many ways. But the reality remains one. What is the underlying principle we are talking about? We are talking about habit of Allah, that what he does, he enfolds and unfolds. He enfolds and unfolds. So similarly, when we are talking about this verse, when people remain blind in this world, meaning it was kept folded for them. It never unfolded for them. Why? The first step was not taken, which was of seeking knowledge, which was to open up the Batni eyes, which was to walk into the Ruhaniyat, see their own Ruhaniyat with their own Batni eyes, having these Mushahidat, having these beautiful dreams within their own being, recognizing the Imam with his rank, supreme rank of imam within their being by obeying him. How will this happen? Is it possible to recognize the paradise? Surely it is possible when we have the knowledge of certainty. With the knowledge of certainty, we will have the light of recognition and we understand how we are going to do that.
again get back to the next step. What is the next step? The next step is Enoliaki, the eye of certainty. It is not enough to only seek knowledge, though very important step, very important step, because the journey begins at knowledge. Serious seekers will have knowledge which is also in darja, which is also in grades. Otherwise, this knowledge is at times overwhelming, confusing difficult to comprehend because there are so many examples, so many terms, but the essence is Imam. If it was enough for us to say Imam is everything and not go into the details of knowing this knowledge, Imam would never have emphasized on the importance of having this intellect, using our intellect to understand our tariqah. Imam would not have given us the farman, learn, 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 11 times. It is extremely important to realize the reason, reasons of us studying together these Tawili books. And this is actually about us because we all are seekers and we want to elevate our soul. And very beautifully we have been always emphasizing on the first level, which is knowledge of certainty. But we need to realize that this verse which we are discussing, that those who are blind here will be blind in hereafter as well. What it means that blindness is also in grades. First, if someone has no knowledge, they are blind to everything. But then this Momin is Salik who starts to seek knowledge. Now they have knowledge. Then what? Is that enough? No, it's not enough. With knowledge, we will intellectually understand everything. Conceptually, we will understand. But we are not seeking this knowledge to be able to verbalize it or be able to articulate concept. We are seeking the fruits in our bhatin as well. Because seeing in our bhatin is completely different from what we are seeing with our physical eyes in knowledge. Those momine saliki who continue to progress on the path of first seeking knowledge, abiding by all the conditions. What were the conditions? We just reviewed. We have to have Nurani time ibadat. We have to have remembrance of Imam. We have to have sacrifice. This is spiritual exercise, riyaz. Love of Imam, true love of Imam in our heart. What does Peer say? Pota ne It is seeing beyond me and I. Maru maru karta. Thai gyu. Peer says in Ginan, right? Ho ho karta hoi gya. It is all about going beyond yourself first in knowledge and then after knowledge going inward within our batin, seeking this pearls of wisdom in our batin, in Nuraniyat, in Ruhaniyat, finding out the truth which we are studying, seeing it in our batin, listening to it in, with our batni ears. Everything of Ruhaniyat, Ruhani world and paradise actually starts first with the knowledge and then it is completed at the level of annual yakin. Remember there's hakkul yakin as well, you discover. But the completion of the knowledge which you started, it means nothing if they are only words. 
when it has some weightage meaning to us and we see it in our bhati. Can we think of examples? How would we see this jannat which is made known to us? What does it mean? Can we think of some examples? Even at the level of knowledge. How does annual yakin helps us? Of course, when we have our batni eyes opened up, we are able to have marifat of our own ruhaniyat. How many times do we wonder, where am I? With knowledge, we do understand. But actually, it is about seeing in our own ruhaniyat and knowing with the help of knowledge, where do we stand? And then, the way everything of the spiritual world and paradise is actually understood, it is completed with anulyaki, when we are seeing with our own eyes. Recognition, which we had started at the level of knowledge, actually gets completed at the level of anulyaki. Again, we need to think of example. What are some of the examples? We'll come back to it in a minute. What are the possible reasons for Mormon to not have these? I am sure we are wondering, and the chapter does talk about it. What are the possible reasons for a Mormon to not have this? Number one, if someone is lacking in true knowledge, not the worldly knowledge, true knowledge. If someone is not committed in doing their ibadat, we have given our commitment to Imam when we receive the Isma Azam. Are we committedly doing our bandagi? Then sacrifice. If there is no kurbani, if there is no additional nawafil ibadat, if there is no sacrifices made, there is no spiritual elevation. Ibadat, the Nurani time Ibadat, is also a sacrifice, sacrifice of our sleep, our comfort, and having this desire to get close to the Noor of the Imam. So that is sacrifice. But remember, this path, what we are seeking, the sacrifice cannot remain limited to Nurani time Ibadat. We want to remain in remembrance all the time. Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah says, Ayadgiri Rakhmanukam Ghanush Kathanshe. We need to remain in remembrance and for that we need to take this sacrifice of reminding, remembering, setting intentions, having the true love of Imam in our heart. Without the ishq of Imam, again this is not possible. If we have love of this world, or worldly things or worldly desires, this love cannot become true. We may, we all love Imam, but remember, love also is in Darjat. The Ishq and the Junoon, the level of Ishq we are talking about, true love, it is above all the worldly love. Then, complete obedience of Imam with conviction. Why do we want to do that? To seek his pleasure. Do we know that the pleasure is actually Rizwan? The word pleasure in Quran is given as Rizwan. Ya Rizwan, we call him Ya Rizwan. Rizwan is also the angel who is the guard of paradise. Ya Rizwan, Ya Rizwan. And remember, what we had studied in the Quranic verse that the angels, recognition of angels and paradise will remain unknown to those who are blind. So those who are understanding these criteria and abiding by these criteria will receive the help, Nurani guidance of the Imam. And they will be able to attain the rank of knowledge of certainty, 
leading them to go to the eye of certainty. So to conclude, recognition and paradise topic, every recognition is attained, positive or negative, jannat or those of Nothing remains hidden from that moment asari. For example, let's take an example. Before coming to knowledge classes, before understanding the concept of tests, any sickness, any worry would overpower a moment and they would remain in this worry all the time. Tell me, has it changed for you? Do you remain in the same worries or you focus on remembrance of Imam? Useless worries, if a moment stays in useless worry, and we have talked about it, that shaitan, what does it do? It constantly repeats the same thing. We have no control over that problem which we have. The problem will resolve on its own. It will take its time. But our mind constantly repeats the same worry, same worry, same worry, same worry. And a person is not able to get out of it, come out of it. But when that person becomes the salik who has the knowledge, will recognize this is dozak. My mind is in dozak. And why am I in dozak? I know better. I do not let, need to let shaitan continue to give me the same cycle of worries. I will overpower that worry. I submit that worry to Imam and I will remain in remembrance because he is mushkil kusha. How simple and beautiful it is to have this recognition in our being with knowledge that whatever is bothering me, I have no control over it. So why am I staying, remaining, keeping myself in this hell? What? This knowledge gave us the ability to recognize this hell, which many live day and night. There was a negative example, right? A moment in Salik will not waste any more breaths in these kind of thinking. Sickness or any kind of test, they understand. This is my, I'm going to make this as my sacrifice because I will remember my Imam more. This knowledge, with this knowledge, what was dozak became reasons for progress. They will also recognize and know this paradise in their heart and mind and they will find happiness. What is that paradise? Didar of the Imam. And don't think of Didar of the Imam limited to the physical Didar and we are blessed, definitely. But Didar is in Batin. Didar is in Nuraniyat as well. Batini Nurani Didar. For a moment in Salik who begins the journey, this didar comes as peace in the heart, despite of all the difficulties, pain, sorrows, whatever it is. But they have this peace in their heart. They have peace in their dreams, happiness in their dreams. How did that become possible? Because they have recognition. At what level? At the level of knowledge. And then it continues to progress if we are abiding by the conditions. So, the blessings of Didar. And do not think that the Didar is limited to one Didar, two Didar, three Didar. There are so many manifestations, one after the other. All the Didar of all the manifestations. This Momine Salik in the Batin remains a companion of Natiks, Hujjat, Imams and gets the Ridar of all. Why not? Why? Because the Batni eyes are opened up. This is Enul Yakin we are talking about. Remember the way we say the recognition of self helps us to recognize the Lord. 
at the level of anurya key they will recognize their own self which will give them the recognition of everything including the paradise remember we as humans we have three levels first lowest level is physical level so physical bounties physical things or physical happiness is temporary it's the lowest level of happiness the middle level is spiritual bounties and the highest bounties are at the level of intellect everlasting bounties everlasting bounties which includes the bounties of here after as well meaning this moment is salik is someone who had taken this world truly as a place um, to akhirat ki kheti right the way we say that this world we need to um, bear the fruits we have to plow the field in this lifetime to be able to bear the fruits in hereafter right the purpose of our life is to recognize recognition is not limited recognition is studied in relationship to quran today recognition of paradise and yes it all relates to recognition of imam as well but the point we are emphasizing and learning in this chapter this paragraph especially in relation to paradise that we need first ilmul yakin which is also in stages and then we need to get to anul yakin we need to have that chashme basirat when we have that what does the chapter say as a result of successful remembrance luminous ibadat nurani ibadat not just nurani time in nurani time physical ibadat or nurani ibadat meaning ibadat ibadat concentration focus is different there are levels and with true knowledge every recognition is attained and in ruhaniyat all the manifestations are observed mushahida of all the manifestation jetla sarup che badha hai sarup 7000 varsh pehla na sarup ke aaj na sarup ke gai kal na sarup all you will be able to see including recognition of paradise so the most important words which we are understanding and he will admit them into paradise which he has already made known to them you know very simply if you really want to understand very simple example actually very basic example but i think it is important to give because very many times we hear this question and it is related to the time of death there are some people when they die they are very happy they have no issues and there are some who are not that happy because death is unknown is uncertain right but some people who die they die with happiness as if they know about it they are in recognition of it they are very happy they are comfortable how did that stage came to their being and for others it is not there this is one example of us understanding this verse that he will admit them into paradise which he has already made known to them though this example is very tiny example let me tell you this example is very tiny but probably very big because we do sometimes obsess with the time of death why because we don't have knowledge because recognition is not that small or that simple having the chashme basirat and having the recognition of quran or paradise or imam these are bigger concepts and bigger understanding not just simply having the recognition of the angel of death meaning it also includes the recognition of angels as well i hope that we are understanding that though it sounds very simple 
but there is all the recognition hidden in this concept. And this whole chapter we are finishing today, which was about spirit and spirituality, Ru or Ruhaniyat. And we have discussed so many beautiful concepts in this just one chapter. So I hope that you will review the whole chapter and understand it and reflect on it because there is so much more to reflect and understand. I'll stop here if anyone has any questions. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. You know, the paradise in every definition, it seems different. So I think the levels of understanding or level of the knowledge tells us where we see ourselves as we will be in paradise. So in Farman's, you beautifully explained, so um, Sultan Mamashas Farman, he said that it's like a stable. And then we have heard in Mola Ali's Kalam and Mola saying, Ilm ki majlis is like a paradise also. So there are a lot of um, different, different levels, concept, peers and Imams have explained it to us at different times, like 600 years ago and then 100 years ago and then now. So, you know, a question actually a friend asked and that made me think, friend is asking i always thought that imam will come and take me because we are all smileys now it seems like that some i am trying to recognize something else am i understanding correctly yes you are correct but something else meaning that what you are saying that there is so much more to recognize and how will i relate for you to make it simple and easier, right? The way if I look at you or you look at me, I'm one person, right? But then how can a whole universe be within us? The whole universe, how can it be? It's logically impossible. It does not make sense. But then it is possible because we are learning, we are understanding it. So if it is possible, how is it possible? In other words, what we are saying, that when we say recognition of Imam, we simplify it. It's a first step to motivate somebody, to make them curious. But when you really get into the journey of knowledge, what you realize that there is so much more to learn and recognize. Because, you know, look at this physical world, right? Today we have gathered here from USA, uh, I saw Zulfikar from Pakistan or some from Canada, from London, from Vancouver, different places. Now, how interesting it would be to visit all these places. I would require time, traveling, preparation, tickets and whatnot. If I have to take so much of effort even to travel in the physical world, so I know these places and I can tell them, oh, I've been to London. I've been to Pakistan. Similarly, when we are walking in the path of Rohaniyat, there are so many places. There are so many places, so many concepts. Now, the key is, when you begin the journey, it is like the example of the Quran book, so thick. Oh my God, 30 sections, 114 chapters, 6,666 verses. How am I going to understand the tawil of every verse? But when you walk on the journey, what happens, all these spread out concepts overwhelms you. Eventually, they all start making sense. They all come close and become, you know, brief and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then it may become just a word. And why a word? Just a dot. This is the beauty of Ruhaniyat. So it is not other things. It is the marifat. Marifat of everything. Ji. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Yeah, we have two questions, very similar, but two different friends. So I'll read both of them uh, as they are very similar. Um, if we die just listening to the knowledge, but it's if it's not going inside, so is it same as blind or ignorant? 
or the other friend asks if someone dies and does not recognize 100%, what happens? So, very good question. If someone does not do anything, remember we are smileys and Imam's duash is with us, is with us, right? Imam's khana vadan is with us. So, if we think of paradise, you know, uh, as Allama Sahib has given example, that think of is of a building of 100 floors, right? If Imam is at the top floor, right? 100th floor. This person who has not worked hard at all, they will be with Imam, but on the ground floor. And this person who is listening to the lectures, crying, but still saying that they are not able to somehow work hard because it is not that Imam has given us something less than others. Imam has given same potential to each one of us until and unless somebody is mentally challenged. That's totally different. But if you are adult and if you are physically, mentally capable to perform in this physical worldly life, we have the same potential as anyone else. Anyone else. But due to the lackings, the factors which we had talked about, lack of true knowledge, lack of, you know, not doing ibadah the way it is ought to be done, piety, love of imam, all those elements are missing or have not been worked upon to be able to sharpen those elements because nobody is being born with the love of imam or the knowledge of imam. Everybody has to work hard to get to that level, right? Remember Imam when he gave us Farman and he repeated learn 11 times. What does that mean? So despite of all that knowledge, so I do want to give you this hope that you have the same potential and you are capable. You are capable. So don't just give up that I just listen and I don't do more. Try, strive to do more. But let's say time completes, right? Then what will happen? Probably they'll be on second floor, third floor, fourth floor. But they will be with Imam because we are smileys. But what does Imam wants from us? He wants us to be meritocratic. What he does want? He wants his children. Where would parents want his children? With him. Where is he? On 100th floor. So there are steps which we got to take to be with him. I hope this helps. Ji, ji, shukr Um Another um, question from Karim Sahib is, is it the same paradise for all or are there multiple paradises? Very beautiful question. So there is no limitation of anything in his code. Uh, there are darjat. You are right that there are darjat. Depending on the level of recognition, that's the darjat. How do we understand if when we say in a farman that, you know, Mullah says, I cannot be um, in any uh, place in the world, but I can be encompassed in moments heart. How would you explain that as being a paradise? Very good question, actually. So the key word, the underlying word is momin. Who is momin? Momin is the one who actually abides by all the conditions which we talked about. We take moment as you know general term and we apply it to everybody. But in reality, moment is the one who is Salik, who is Arif, who is meeting all those criteria which we talked about. Only then it will be the place where Imam will reside. In reality, Imam, you know, uh, mercifully through the Ruhani Qiyamat, lets that moment get all the recognition. When we are seeking Imam's Didar, Imam's closeness, we are seeking our own Qiyamat. Qiyamat means merging with Imam, becoming one with Imam. So Imam does not come in the heart of any moment. The moment who has taken upon all these conditions which we talked about, ibadat, first true knowledge, ibadat, 
nawafil ibadah, sacrifices, true love of imam, obedience of imams for amin with conviction, all those conditions are met, then only this heart will become the house of imam because there is taqwa, there is purity and imam will come to this heart of a moment. Meaning, you know what does it mean in the other example? This moment is with imam on the 100th floor during lifetime. It's all about during lifetime. And we learn this in the story of Adam actually. Adam started his journey as mustajib, as one of us, right? Those who are seeking knowledge. Because nobody is born with this knowledge. We have to work hard to learn this knowledge. So when somebody invests their time and they work hard, take interest and learn and have the commitment of learning this knowledge, Adam from Mustajib continued to elevate and when he got Ismayazam and the way he did Ibadat of Imam, he elevated all the ranks and became one, merged with Imam. So we do have examples. We have example of Salman Farsi as well who became one of the Ahle Bayt. How did he become? He was not even born smiley. The way Imam said in his Farman that if you are smiley, you know, don't think that you will get to paradise. You got to work for it. So if we are just happy being smiley, we should be. But remember, our tariqa tells us clearly that there are darjat. So if we have not worked hard, we will not get to the higher darjat. It would be unfair, right? It would be unfair. Somebody works very hard during their lifetime. They do not have fun, physical fun or physical life or friends or this and that. And they are sacrificing in their ilm or ibadat and everything. And then when the end time comes, this person is behind. That would not be the justice of Imam, right? Justice would be that the, those who work hard, they will be rewarded. Now it is Imam's desire when he rewards. In his lifetime, after, during, it is all Imam's mercy. We never become vain in thinking, oh, I'm doing this, so I will receive this. No, we continue to work hard and it is up to Imam. But we do know that he, he sees everything. Every thought, every hard work, he sees everything. And he is Sariul Hisa. In Quran it says he's swift in account. He, you know, um, the way Peer says, Ekka Savala. He gives immediately. Maro Sami to Chevu, Jikoino Rakhe Bhar. Sami Ali Ekwa, Sami Ali Sosova. So in one place we say that, you know, we should not expect and we should not because that would put us in the situation that I did this. I did this, so I reserve this. I don't deserve anything. It is his mercy. That's the way we got to think. But on the other hand, we have this hope, this satisfaction, which Peer is teaching us. That my Mola is not someone who will keep anybody's debt. If you have done the work, he will, he will give it back to you multiplied times. So we do know. But it is the attitude which we need to keep of not asking the results. Ya Mola, my job is to work hard. It is your desire to give or not. I will remain patient and grateful. I will not complain. That's what we are studying in Betul Khyal Farman of Hazrima, that you remain patient. You do not complain. You do not become greedy, but you do work hard. I hope this helps. Um, friends, beautiful questions. Uh, we'll take one last question, comment, or reflection. Um, if anyone wants to come unmute and um, say it, come forward, please. All right, one person. I heard somebody's voice. Any reflection anybody would like to share thinking of paradise? How did they feel from a few months back and today's session? So it would be interesting to learn. 
Yes, Nashleen Sahib. Okay, um, one, that's somebody speaking, okay. I, I just wanted to say that these kinds of uh, explanations and, uh, and you know, knowledge gives us so much of hope for people to say, you know what, if I have not done it up till now, I have hope to do this. And how can I get this knowledge? How can I progress? You know, and, and it, if you take step by step, it can happen because once you go the first steps, you know, this is what you learn, you feel really good. And then it motivates you to go further for the next step to, to be able to get more knowledge and more happiness and peace within yourself. And once you get that taste, you're not going to go backwards. Um, so it's, it's great to know this. It's, it's very um, hopeful and very, you know, it gives you a chance to say that you can do this now. Thank you so much. Shukar, thank you, Nasin, because I was about to say that I hope that nobody is fearing or becoming uncomfortable because that was not the intention. The intention is that we realize that we have this chance, this you know ability, and continue to identify where we are lacking, where we can become stronger. And Imam's mercy is with everybody. None of us has less or some of us has more. No, it's not like that. We all are equal. We all are equal. The key is that we need to look at these conditions and start following. And you know, those who are genuinely, sincerely work, follow these conditions, believe me, Imam's mercy comes. Imam's mercy comes. So first, this knowledge was difficult. The interest was not there. Now we are studying these books. These books are not easy, but we are studying, we are understanding, and we are liking it. That's a big progress in itself. So today, due to this chapter, we are learning and come, you know, being aware about the next step. So if we know our path, we know to take steps further because we know the path. What if we did not know the path? Without knowledge, Actually, we can't not know the path. But the beauty is that because we are learning, we know exactly what steps do we need to take to continue going further to elevate our soul. Elevation is in the hands of Imam. What we are identifying is what do I need to do? What steps do I need to take? And if we understand that, voila, our work is done then all remains an imam and we know he's merciful he'll take care of us agreed thank you nasri shikamala um uh, shaman Tab also said that thank you for the beautiful spiritual session so we all are benefiting thank you niamat Saiba, for a wonderful session it gives us truly the hope and courage to continue this journey and um, learn these beautiful concepts Thank, Thank you, you, friends. Yali Mada. Thank you, Yamata. Yali Mada. 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 Yeah, I'm with that.